Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to be looking at the Shane's muscular dystrophy. And let's go ahead and get started. So I have the definition of what it is already written on the board, a genetic disorder in which there is progressive weakness and muscle degeneration. And you're gonna see it's associated with a protein called dystrophin, which we'll get into in just a minute. But first of all, who gets Duchenne's muscular dystrophy? How do we get it? Well, two thirds of the time, it's genetic. So in other words, it's going to be inherited. That means that one third of the time, it's due to a spontaneous mutation. It's found on the X chromosome. Usually it's a recessive X linked disorder. So it's X linked, right? And I'm gonna explain this in just a minute. And so therefore it's more common in boys. Normally it's diagnosed between the ages of three and six years old. And normally parents, what they'll notice is that the kid is falling down or having difficulty walking upstairs and things such as that. Normally by the teens, these boys are in wheelchairs. And then unfortunately, by the mid twenties, usually death occurs. Okay, and we're gonna go into all that in just a second. So how do we get to Shane's muscular dystrophy? Well, let's take a look over here. And when we talk about what we mean by x link So you have a mom, right? And you have a dad, okay? So here's what's going to happen. Females can only donate an X chromosome. Dads can donate an X or a Y. If the mom donates an X and the dad donates an X, you end up with a girl. If the mom donates an X and, and the dad donates a Y, you're gonna end up with a boy. Now, if mom donates a defective X chromosome and dad donates a healthy X chromosome, dad's healthy X chromosome will cover up the defect that's, that's a mom's chromosome. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with a healthy girl. However, if mom donates a defective X chromosome and dad donates a Y, what's gonna happen is there's nothing to cover up that defect on the X chromosome. And so now you're gonna end up with a boy who has Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Okay, and that's how it's passed on through inheritance. And like I said, it's, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy can also be due to a spontaneous mutation. So let's take a look now of what happens when you have Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Okay, so let's take a look now at what happens in muscular dystrophy. But first we gotta look at how the cell functions, right? Or how the muscle actually functions. So <clears throat> this right here, this is gonna be my muscle right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a close up view of the muscle, because the muscle is made up of muscle cells. Those muscle cells we call myocytes. Okay, and you have a whole bunch of these inside of, these inside of your muscle, right? These are myocytes. Now you're looking at a cross view of this. In actuality, if I were to take this and turn it towards you, it would actually look, you'd see a whole bunch of these together like this, okay? But I just have them like this right here. To give you another idea of what this would look like, imagine it looks something like, if I go like this, like this. It would look, look something like that, but the way you're looking at it right now is like this. So in actually, actuality, you actually have a bundle of these. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look closely inside of these myocytes. And when I do, I end up with this structure here. Okay, so what's going on is this here and this here is my cell membrane. And we're gonna call this a sarcolemma. The cell membrane of a muscle is called a sarcolemma. So that's sarcolemma and this is sarcolemma here. So the, imagine this would be the sarcolemma up here and this is the sarcolemma down here. Okay, and I'd be on all of these, right? So that's the sarcolemma. Now, if we look at the structure here, this is called a sarcomere. And the sarcomere is going to be made up of two parts. The red part is called actin. And this blue part is called myosin. And you see how you have these little projections sticking out of that myosin right there? Well, what happens is when the muscle goes to contract, when you want the muscle to contract, those little projections will go up into the actin. And what they will do is they will actually kind of trigger 
And when they do, they pull these red parts of the actin closer together. This is also actin over here. They come closer together, kind of like slides over each other. And we actually call this the slide and filament theory. So that's the way the muscle is supposed to work under normal conditions, right? And I'm gonna come back to this in just a minute, but there's one thing I wanna go over real quick. So another thing that's gonna happen inside of my cell, my myocyte, is you're gonna have proteins. And eventually these proteins get old. So I'm gonna have the old protein right here. And then you actually have enzymes inside here that are going to break down these old proteins. And we're gonna call these proteins proteases. Now, for the most part, these proteases are inactive, right? But when we need to break down proteins, what's gonna happen is calcium is going to enter into the myocyte, right? So calcium's gonna come in here. It's going to bind with this protease. Now that protease becomes active, and what it does is it breaks down this old protein. So it breaks down the old protein, right? And this is a normal part of cell function because then it's gonna be replaced by a healthy protein, right? So now, let's take a look at what's gonna happen in muscular dystrophy. Well, one, oh, one more thing real quick. I have this structure that's up here, and we're gonna call this the distro glycan complex. Okay, so that's the distal glycan complex. And then up here we have something that we call extracellular matrix. An extracellular matrix is basically designed to help hold things in place, right? So now, coming off of this actin, we have another protein that's gonna come off of here and it's gonna to attach to this dystroglycan complex. And we're gonna call this protein dystrophin. Okay, so that's this trophin right there. Now I only drew one, you actually have a lot more than this, right? So now the way this works is like I said, as this slides over each other, this keeps, this, this trophin keeps this sarcomere from overstretching the muscle. Right? This provides structural support so we don't overstretch the muscle or the muscle doesn't get damaged as it contracts and relaxes. Let's look at now what happens in muscular dystrophy. In muscular dystrophy, like we said, there's a problem with the genes, the genetics, right? So what's going to happen is this is going to be too short. And now it's not going to attach to this dystroglycan complex. Well, when it can't attach to the dystroglycan complex, now I can get overstretching of this muscle, and I don't, have the, I don't have the structural support. So as the muscle contracts and relaxes, you start to get micro tears in here. So when you get these micro tears, here's what's going to happen, is you are going to have calcium now, excess calcium, entering into through the micro tear. Now like we just mentioned, inside of here, we have these inactive proteases, right? So there's an inactive protease, there's an inactive protease, and then the calcium's going to bind to this and make them active. Now they become active proteases, right? They'll go and they'll break down old proteins, but now the bad thing is, is they will now also start breaking down <clears throat> healthy proteins. So let's say this is my healthy protein here. And these are proteins you need for structural support of the cell and also for it to function properly, right? So it'll start breaking these down. It'll start breaking down my healthy proteins. Okay? And because it does this, now my myocyte becomes weaker and it can't function properly, right? The other thing that's going to happen is you actually have another molecule in here, which we are going to call creatine kinase. And what creatine kinase does is it provides energy to the cell, to the myocyte. Well, because we have this tarin, this will leak out. And because this leaks out now, the myocyte loses energy. So now it doesn't have that as much energy and it can't function properly because of the fact that we're breaking down healthy proteins. 
eventually the myocyte will die. When the person is young, what's good is that if the myocytes die, they can be replaced by other myocytes. But unfortunately, as a person gets older, the body loses the ability to replace these and instead starts to replace this with fat and with scar tissue. So now we're gonna have fat and scar tissue in there, right? So now this is going to start to lead to problems because over time we get more and more fat and scar tissue in place of myocytes. Okay, so let's take a look now of what can happen. So I have a person here, right? And as the myocytes get replaced by muscle, I mean by fat and scar tissue, the muscles in the low back can weaken and they will start to stick out. This is not a person who's facing that way. And they can start this, uh, you'll get an increased curvature in the low back. So we call that a hyperlordosis. Okay, so you see a hyperlordosis in someone with muscular dystrophy. The other thing that's gonna happen is because the abdominal muscles weaken, we can get a protruding abdomen. Now, the next thing that can happen is sometimes what will happen is there'll be enlargement of the calf muscles, again, once, once again, because of the fact that you're getting fat and scar tissue in the calf muscles, in the myocytes in the calf muscles, so these will actually enlarge. And we call this pseudo-hypertrophy. Because it looks like they've been working out, but they haven't. So this is gonna be enlarged calf muscles. As the person's walking, and as that, that abdomen starts to stick out and they get that hypolordosis, the arms will swing behind the back. So that's another thing, is the arms go in the back, they're gonna do that for balance. And because of the fact that this muscle is no longer functioning properly, it's not uncommon to walk on tippy toes. Okay, now, the other thing that's gonna happen is Here's the lungs, and when it comes to the lungs, what can happen is below the lungs, you have another muscle, and we call this the diaphragm. So here's the diaphragm, and because that's a muscle, what will happen also is that the myocytes in there will also start to be replaced with fat and scar tissue. And same with the intercostal muscle that are around the rib cage. Those will also be replaced with fat and scar tissue, and therefore the respiratory muscles will not work properly, which will lead to problems breathing. And finally, you have the heart, and the heart is also a muscle. So the same thing can happen here. What's gonna happen is the myocytes in the heart will actually start to be replaced with fat and scar tissue, and therefore it can lead to heart failure and unfortunately death. So that's it for muscular dystrophy. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button and we will catch you next time.